this is, this is, this is. Welcome to another one, My Career Podcast, episode 485, all about you guys, all about you. Um, and I, I want to say thank you. Thank you to anyone that ordered from mxpx.com over the weekend. Uh, last week was Thanksgiving, and I'm very grateful to have people that just want stuff. They just want, they don't care what it is, almost. I mean, they do, but, <laughs> you know, we had this, speaking of not caring what it is, I mean... We have a new variant of, of the, you know, the new album, Find a Way Home, the Nova variant. And um, this thing is just absolutely beautiful. Very cool. Look at that. It's full of purple sand. And if you put this in any UV light or a black light kind of thing, you charge it up like that. It doesn't actually work on, um, on just regular light bulbs. I don't know why that is, but it will glow in the dark if you charge it up with UV light. There's instructions when when you buy one of these. It comes with instructions. Anyway, those are beautiful. They're all at mxpeaks.com. We have skateboard decks, and we still have uh, picture discs of the album, in case you forgot about those. We try to, you know, we have a bunch of other variants as well. If you don't want a fancy, fancy record. This is very limited. They're all hand numbered. This one actually isn't hand numbered because it's the first one that I grabbed. So I guess technically it could be number one or zero, or it could be like the very last one. But uh, we've been we've been busy in the store, so thank you. Um, nothing's ever perfect, but things have been going eerily well. So <laughs> let's hope everybody gets what they ordered and and all that. And and you know what's funny is like for the most part it always goes right. It's just like the little things that do go wrong get amplified beyond belief. It's insane. And so, hey, <laughs> that's life, right? That's what we're dealing with. Um, but thank you for ordering from mxpx.com. We have hoodies like these. I love this thing. Um, all right. MXPX is playing live and we are, we're going to be uh, closing off the year 2023 with a show at the Showbox in Seattle. That's December 30th. That's a Saturday night. That's the last Saturday before New Year's, before 2024. So uh, that's uh, December 30th at the Showbox in Seattle, Washington. MXPX and Diesel Boy. It's Diesel Boy, the punk band, not Diesel Boy, the DJ. So just want to clarify that a little bit. Um, gonna be fun. So, all right. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna have some surprises for that to kick off. You know, kind of like in the, the the old year, kick off the new year, right? Um, anyway, it's not a New Year's show per se. It is an MXPX show, and we are gonna be playing a bunch of songs off the new album. Um, come see MXPX in uh, the new year. Our very first show, January sixth at the Hollywood Palladium in Los Angeles, California. That's right off Sunset Boulevard, um, right in the heart of it. And it's going to be good. So MXPX, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes, all on one show and all at the newly renovated Palladium. And this is a show of a lifetime for us. We've really have been trying to put, put something together uh, with Less Than Jake and, and Reliant K and then, you know, Smoking Popes were in, and we love the Smoking Popes. We love their songs. They're so good. Just really, really well done. Uh, speaking of songwriting, I talk a lot about songwriting on this podcast, but, like, all of these bands, great songs. Um, all right, so that's January 6th. Tickets are still available. It's getting low, so don't wait. Get your tickets for January 6th. Um, and then MXPX and the Ataris, we are kicking it off in 2024, uh, in February, February 9th in New York City at Webster Hall. That's February 9th, 2024. Tickets are available for that. But then the next night, uh, February uh, 10th uh, in Philadelphia, it's sold out at Union Transfer. Sold out. So thank you. Thank you guys for selling that out. You're just going to have to come to New York City. Come see us there. It's going to be awesome. We uh, we invited some friends friends out for that. So uh, MX Peaks and the Ataris. Um uh, Okay, so that's February 9th and 10th, and then March 15th at Buckhead Theater in Atlanta, Georgia, and then March 16th 
House of Blues in Orlando, Florida. Both of those cities are gold for MXPX and Atari's, and we're going to have a good time with that. So come on down. Buckhead Theater in Atlanta, and then Orlando. We're at the House of Blues. Can't wait for both those shows. Um, and then April 5th in, at the Ogden Theater in Denver, Colorado. Uh, that's with MXPX, Five Iron Frenzy, and the Ataris. So Five Iron Frenzy's hometown, their main support on that night. It's going to be great. And then uh, April 6th, the Depot in Salt Lake City, Utah, making up our date that we had to cancel in 2020 when the whole world shut down. And uh, we really apologize that that, that that had to happen. But uh, here we are, finally back. It was the right time to do it. And uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So once again, you guys, come see the Ataris and MXPX live. It's going to be awesome in 2024. Tickets are available for most of the shows, although some are getting low. So don't wait if you want to come. MXPX.com for all the ticket links. And uh, appreciate you guys. All right. That's it for now. Um, call in if you want to be part of this episode, or not this episode, if you're a little late, but uh, if you want to be part of any episode, call in. The number is 360-830-6660, okay? Uh, that, that's uh, to my voicemail. Leave me a voicemail, and I will put you on the show. Um, we're getting back to them, so uh, we're getting through. This is all stuff from probably just like later last month. And then, uh, you know, I'm catching up. So if you have anything you want to tell me, call me. If you want me to talk about anything, uh, it could be a totally non-music related topic. Just want to get my take as the, you know, artist, bass player, singer, songwriter that I am. Um, I'd love to try. But uh, most people just ask about MXP stories. <laughs> so uh, let's get to it. Uh, Bob McKnight, shout out to you, producer man. Appreciate you. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. I hope it was good. Um, we're getting closer and closer to episode 500, and, and Bob keeps wanting me to do something special for it. And he has a couple good ideas. Um, but I would, love, I would love if you guys have ideas, write them on the... MX, or on the sorry on the the my career podcast facebook message group and if you don't do facebook you can default with whatever you follow on there like instagram or twitter or something like that twitter x right twitter um those are the three uh you know sure follow mxpx follow my career td on tiktok i do post the podcast clips and, and promo there but uh, i don't have a separate podcast version of tiktok so you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and follow me on on my regular tiktok which is kind of a quirkier version of what we do with with our regular social media it's just like weirder f effects on things and it's kind of fun but let's face it it's it's all right but <laughs> it's not that fun um all right let's get to it we're gonna get to your voicemails right right about now funk soul brother something so, <laughs> you know what i'm saying all right let's see if i can find this here we go hey mike todd here long time listener fourth time caller i believe i recently got right. tickets for the denver show i'm excited about that awesome. i've really been loving the album Around when you first dropped the album, I think, in an episode, you mentioned, hey, have your mom listen to the album. <laughs> so recently, I was on my way to a family event, had my mom in the car with me. So I, I had a captive audience. I love it. And I made her listen to the album. Uh, her first comment was there's a lot of drums, that the drums make it hard to hear what that guy is saying. Um, I did turn down my bass in a little. I usually have the bass boosted in my car. That helped her a little bit, though she still thought there's a lot of drums. Uh, two, she said, that guy's more of a rapper than a singer, right? I was like, well, no. I mean, there's melody to what he does. It's more, I would call it like shout singing in some of the songs. But, I mean, it's still singing. There's, you know, rapping generally involves rhythm, but not as much melody. But, um she asked if anybody else sings. Uh, I think she was disappointed when I said it was just Mike. Um, oh, man. Her favorite songs, though, uh, Stay Up All Night and Call Me, yeah. I think because they were, 
you know, basically you're more singing. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Those were the impressions from my 74 year old mother who mostly listens to like classic rock and the Christian station or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I fulfilled the mission of getting my mom to listen. Okay, man. I will see you in Denver. Peace. That's so rad, Todd. Thank you. Todd from Denver. Uh, your mom likes two songs. The Okay, maybe she doesn't like them. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder how many thumbs up we get. Do we get one? We get one and a half? We get a half of thumbs? Um, that's interesting. It's so interesting to hear the take of somebody that's not used to hearing punk rock, not used to hearing MXPX. And I could see that how it could be a bit abrasive, a bit choppy, a bit like, what is this singing? Um, don't let her listen to hate breed. You know, I mean, I don't know if she's going to, you know, if she'll have a heart attack or something. I mean, like, you know, like don't, Yeah this mxpx is like so positive i mean so is hate breed to be honest but like it doesn't sound positive um it's disguised in <laughs> in hate but uh stay up all night i thought that's the one that's what you should have started with but i i understand if she's if she's like letting you actually listen to multiple songs i commend her for like listening through and actually giving an honest opinion even if it wasn't her thing it's kind of amazing um it sounds like she heard not today first which is yeah i sound kind of like a rapper like i'm just spitting out lyrics so quickly like rap lyrics um i'm feeling sad from days of long gone like we did something wrong to make them move along and in my head my memories they play on endlessly like movies and it feels like it is seven years ago oh yesterday can't tell the difference and i can't make out the shapes this is insane and i'm suspended first of all what matters and i'm not sure if i'll find it but i hope i do someday like yeah that's a lot to sing in in uh and the reason I stumbled was like, am I going to keep going? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I should just keep going. But yeah, that's uh, that's not even a typical MXPX song. I mean, I mean, it, I guess it kind of is. I mean, we put it first for a reason. Maybe if we played um, um, Tomorrow's Another Day. Time flies by when everything is okay. Just turns out that life ain't that way. Big decisions overwhelm me, and I know nothing's free. So, kind of got a cadence to it. Um, she's got a point there, Todd. She really does have a point there. Maybe I am a rapper, and I'm just kind of like realizing that now because of your 74 year old mom. Commend, I commend her. I commend you for for giving it a, a good shot. And for getting all the way through the record, it sounds like. It sounds like through the record. I mean, I, I can only imagine somebody of her age listening to MXPX for the first time and hearing a song like Mistakes Will Be Made or even even uh, what I tell myself with the, the drums. <laughs> like, oh, whoa. Like, oh, my God, like... No, no, I don't need that in my life. Like, I can understand that from, from your mom. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. That's so awesome, man. Like, this is kind of like my favorite phone call in the history of, of the show, maybe, I, I, that I can remember anyway. So Todd, kudos to you. Good job. Um, all right, let's go on. Let's move. Hey, Mike, it's William, your biggest fan in Birmingham. <laughs> I say that even though I didn't make it to Furnace Fest. <laughs> uh, but I'll see you in Georgia this March, so looking looking forward to that. Anyway, uh, the first voicemail I ever left you, which was not that long ago, was about food. And then I heard you, uh, I enjoyed listening to you talk about the breakfast burrito last podcast. So I figured I'd make you talk about food a little more just for fun. Um, here's a question I like to use as kind of an icebreaker question sometimes. If there was a pizza called the Mike Herrera pizza, what would it have on it? And what kind of pizza would it be? So not not your favorite pizza, but what would the Mike Herrera special be? So for me, the Williams special is 
just a regular hand tossed pizza with um, anchovies, green peppers, and mushrooms. Weird combo, but it's it's really good. If you like, I don't know, if you like a really fishy smell on your pizza like I do. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. What's the what's the Mike Herrera special pizza? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I I personally like an oven oven roasted. No, oven baked. What do they call those? Oven fi- wood fire wood fire oven roasted pizza. I really love those. Um, so not my favorite, but. Like when I go, like when there's a lot of people eating, it's easy to order something like, um, obviously cheese pizza, a pepperoni pizza, a Hawaiian pizza, a spicy Hawaiian, which is jalapenos. It's a Hawaiian pizza with jalapenos on it. But I personally really like my favorite pizza and it it has to be from certain, certain places or a certain, you know, few places. But, um... There's a place in Bremerton called Evergreen Pizza, and they have a margarita pizza that's just out of control. Love it. Reminds me of some East Coast bits of, you know, like a New Jersey, a Connecticut pizza, something with uh, the the mozzarella squares or, or round chunks are just like you can kind of see them melted onto the pizza. Like it's just I love their margarita pizza. So like. For me, maybe a margarita with green peppers because green peppers are something that I think about all the time. And I almost never get them on my pizza because people just don't have them the way I want them, right? Um, Because a lot of places around here, like I love the pizza next door um, from the studio, awesome. But like they don't have all the ingredients that like a real real pizza place would have. They're a bar pizza place. So they have like a few things, and they're like, "All right, we're good." It's great, but if you order green peppers from there, it's just going to come sliced up. And to me, that's like, okay, what is this? Like, just pre-bought, frozen, sliced up green peppers, probably. So I need my green peppers to be very fresh and just cut up and placed on there. And that taste, I crave it all the time. I think about it all the time. And I almost never eat it. Because I think the feeling and the the smell of it and the the thought of it in my head, in my brain, is better than actually eating it. So, to the spirit of maybe not your favorite pizza, but one that should be called the Mike Herrera Special, I'm going to go with uh, basically a margarita pizza with green peppers on top. So when margarita is like, it's, it's a vegetarian pizza, but I'm not vegetarian, but I love a vegetarian pizza. I love, a, I love, it's got cheese, sauce, cheese, and basil with maybe a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette or not vinaigrette, but balsamic, balsamic vinegar. Um, just a little bit, just not, not too much. Some people overdo it. If you overdo it, it drowns the pizza and it's terrible. There's a place in Waco that's got great pizza, but when you order a margarita from there, it, it it's just swimming in, in this, this balsamic vinegar. And um, it, the balsamic vinegar is like the darker vinegar. It's got the nice taste to it. It's really nice in, in tomatoes with, um, you know, mozzarella slices. Um, those like salads with the basil leaves on top. Like I just really like that fresh vibe. So I'm going to go with a margarita pizza. I should probably just look up what margarita, what's it, what the exact ingredients of a margarita pizza is. Um, I probably should know this, but um, you know, (laughs) I don't Uh, hold on. I'm uh, typing this. I don't have my guy, Jamie, pull that up. Um, Okay, here we go. I'm looking up the classic margarita. Yeah, this looks about right. What is a margarita pizza? Invented in the 1800s, a pizza margarita showcases the colors of the Italian flag, which is very cool. Red from the tomato sauce, white from the mozzarella, 
and green from the basil. So the story goes that the margarita is named after Queen Margarita of Savoy, an Italian queen in the 1800s. Um, tools. Okay, we don't need tools. We just need we just need the exact ingredients. So pretty much, I guess those are the ingredients. Of course, you need to have dough as well. But we're talking sauce, mozzarella, and basil on top. And the other thing I love on top of that, I'll put, you know, aside from green peppers, I really love a margarita pizza with fresh sliced tomatoes. Very, 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 very firm tomatoes sliced and put on top after the pizza is done. So not, be, not, not cooked with the pizza. It's a fresh, cold tomato slice on it and then you can you know you can put a little you know if you want but i don't think you really need it because it's just you've got the whole pizza for flavor and then you've got that for like an extra i don't know it's a texture it's a texture it's a taste it's it's nice so that's that's the mike herrera signature the margarita with green peppers because <laughs> it's always on my mind for some reason it I, I i get it all the time there's 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 different things in, in my life that I just think about sometimes, and that's one of them. I'm just always thinking about green peppers and the smell of them, the taste of them, and uh, and I hardly ever eat them. So, hmm. But I do, I, lo I love it whenever I do. So maybe that's what it is, is like I'm delaying gratification. All right, William, thanks for the call. Great, great call. Love this. Hey, Mike. It's Luke calling from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And I just want to say thanks for getting those shows out there. We got our tickets for Philly last week, and we're so pumped. I'm uh, raising a second-generation MXPX fan. My son, he's 16, going to take him to his first show ever, and uh, we're so excited. So take my wife to her first punk rock show. She's pumped. So I just want to say thanks for putting out some um, consistent – Excellent music. Really enjoyed it over the years. And I uh, can't wait. Dude, you got cut off at the end, but I, I appreciate the call, Luke. So stoked, Philly. It's sold out. So thank you guys for selling out Philadelphia. Um, we'll see you there. We'll see you there. Uh, second generation. I love hearing that. You know, sometimes I kind of feel like, yeah, do people really like MXPX anymore or am I done? You know, and, and, and even in the midst of having a hugely successful year, I think about that, you know, and, and the album's been successful. People have been loving it and listening to it. So it's calls like these that really, it kind of pushes me forward in a positive way, gets me back on track, gets me moving, gets me motivated. I love it. So thank you, Luke. We're going to play a bunch of songs from the new record and a, and a bunch of classics. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Um, I, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. And, and you know, throughout those those shows, you know, we're not going to necessarily do the exact same set. We're going to switch out a few songs here and there and and make sure that, that it, it switches up. But, uh, you know, we get in those favorites as much as we can always. And, um, you know, I want, you know, we just got to hear from you guys, if, if anything. But uh, these are the kind of calls that that get keep me going. Um, can't wait for it. Philadelphia sold out. That same weekend, you can get tickets to our New York show at the Webster Hall or Webster Theater. Sorry, Webster Theater in New York City. So that's February 9th, my daughter's birthday. So we're going to be celebrating with an MXPX show. Why not, right? Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, this next caller has two calls. Um, I don't know what he called about, but he called in succession. So we're just going to go ahead and just play them both. Here we go. Hey, Mike, this is Cyrus from New Mexico calling in again. Um, listen, loving Find a Way Home so far. Uh, really good album to all the time. Uh, I just uh, actually bought tickets. Uh, I'm going to fly out to see you guys at the uh, House of Blues in Orlando uh, with my girlfriend. That's going to be a lot of fun. Super excited for that. Um, so that brings me to my question. I wanted to ask um, kind of how far uh, back you and the Ataris go um, and kind of like what it was like uh, working with each other because I uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong in this, I believe uh, you did backing vocals on their song, uh, Radio Number 2, and then Chris Rowe did backing vocals on Broken Hearted, I believe. Um, so I was just kind of wondering, um, like, kind of how, how that was like, what it was like working together, just kind of, like, collaborating. And, um, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, um, listen, yeah, uh, digging the new album a lot, like I said. I uh, can't wait to see you guys, and uh, thanks for listening. Um yeah, all right. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. Cyrus, man, thank you. Um, I guess I should answer this, and then we'll get to your next call and answer that question. I don't know what the question is, but let me just keep going with the Ataris. Um, Chris and I go way back. I mean, I met Chris in Indiana when MX Peaks was playing. Um, we were playing a theater... Uh, Emerson Theater, Emerson Theater in, I think, Indi Indianapolis, Indiana area. Um, he came out to the show. He gave me their demo. Um, and then shortly shortly after that, I kind of like heard about them getting signed to Kung Fu and putting out a record. And, and then we really hung out a lot on the, the, the small town, mo the, no, the Turd Town Tour. Turd Town Tour? Yeah, the Small Town Minds tour was one of MXPX's tour, uh, separate tour. So we, the Vandals took MXPX and the Ataris out on this Turd Town tour. It was all the crappy cities. So it was like Reno, Nevada instead of Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> things like that. Um, it was like, yeah, Bakersfield, California, things, you know. Um, just remembering, uh, we played we played a show with we played a bunch of shows on that tour and some of them were with, uh, were with other bands good riddance was on one of the shows it's cool to to play a show with them uh that was early on um as far as like when this was like what what time was this it, it was i want to say it was after life in general before slowly going the way of the buffalo um, or around life, around the life in general days. Like we were still fairly small, but we were like really growing. And I think the Vandals got us at a great time when we were still, we were just in the van doing our thing. It was definitely 1996, 1995, 1996, somewhere in there. Um, and the Ataris and, and MXPX guys would just, we would just hang out all the time. Uh, Derek, the original drummer of Lagwagon, RIP, he was the drummer. Uh, of the Ataris at the time and and Marco Marco was the the bass player um Marco 77 I don't know if you guys know him he was a uh, later the bass no the, he later he was the guitar player uh in Sugar Colt he was Sugar Colt guitar player anyway we would hang out all of us Chris Rowe and you know Chris Rowe's a lot like me but also nothing like me you know he he's he's an artist like me he's a songwriter so he's always you know taking time to himself to to get things down and and i do that too and so like we really got along in that respect even though he has a lot of things about him that's you know his personal things that he that's way different from me um but we all get obsessed with things and you know so like it's just kind of funny like i was we were on tour together. We were in like Thailand or something. We were in the hotel and we were like going to go somewhere to go to the show or to go to the airport or something. We were going, we were like, let's go. And he's like, I, I gotta have a, I gotta stop and get a Coke zero. I gotta have a Coke zero. It's like, Hey, all right, cool. Let's get, get you a Coke zero. No problem. <laughs> it's just like little things as learning, you know, you learn about people when you, know, you spend a lot of time with them. So like, yeah, we spent a lot of time together, but like that was early when we were kids, we spent time together, uh, trashing hotel rooms and like getting in trouble, lighting fireworks off. Like there's lyrics that, that Chris has written in so long Astoria. It might even be in this diary, but, uh, hotel swimming pools and parking lots. Nah, 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 nah. Like those lyrics he's talking about that, you know, I'm not going to claim that every, that it's all from that tour, but like, the catalyst for a lot of these memories that he is talking about in his Atari songs are experiences that he had when we were on tour with them. And 
kind of experiencing a lot of that mayhem together and just like because it had to be crazy for him this like indiana boy moving to santa cruz or santa barbara santa barbara but just getting on tour right away and being on tour with the Ataris, or sorry, with, well, the Ataris being on tour with the Vandals and MXPX and, you know, meeting up with all these other bands, Good Riddance and Black Wagon. And it must have been an intense, you know, it's just like a lot happening all at once. And, you know, I can see that and in, in, in hear that in those songs, those Atari songs. So, like, that means a lot to me, too. It's very cool to hear, you know, lyrics that are about a time that, were really fun times you know and like i wonder if i pointed out to face to face that lyric in that song that they'd be like oh yeah i kind of re i remember that yeah we did destroy your van <laughs> uh you know ah uh, i you know i was hanging out with trevor and, and the face face guys over the summer we played a show that they they were main support we headlined uh festival in quebec and it was so much fun to just like shoot the shit and just like hang out with those guys again and, and just talk, you know, and, and it wasn't all about like the old days. It was about anything. It was about life. It was about now. It was about whatever, you know? So yeah. Uh, I know you wanted to hear about collabing with Chris. So I'll tell you about that. Um, Chris was recording their So Long Astoria album uh at a at a i don't remember the name of the studio but it was it was right off sunset right next to carl's jr uh, uh right next to amoeba, amoeba rep records like right there and we were recording on melrose avenue down a little further uh melrose and down towards like you start to get all the mexican restaurants like that's where we were at conway studios so um you know we were just like wow we're recording you know our records at the same time kind of you know like <laughs> we we're to be honest you know to be fair we we're both recording uh a very long time a very long time but um well so so now that i think about it uh the record that that he sang on for us you were talking about broken hearted that's on before everything and after which actually we didn't record at conway studios that was the ever passing moment so that was the ever present moment was like we're recording at conway studios on melrose and like you know uh crosby stills nash and young are in the other room or you know at one point it was like the foo fighters were mixing uh their album that was like ready learning to fly make a, you know whatever that is uh no that's tom petty's song it's also a foo Fighters song i just didn't sing it right <laughs> i sang the tom petty version uh but you know what i'm saying uh that was the album um Dun, dun, dun. that's how the that that song ends dun, dun, dun. um anyway fast forwarding the next album before everything and after we were recording in north hollywood at el dorado studios and so we had chris come in and sing brokenhearted there um and then we you know i did the same came down to sunset hung out got to check out what he was doing like the whole band came out came out there and and you know chris the drummer kid i remember that chris was like showing yuri his drum takes like hey, this is just a drum mix bro and they're just talking drums and sounds and like you know yuri's always been a huge fan of of kids drumming and you know it's good it's great you know he's a great drummer um so you know they've always hit it off and 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 s s with you know in the same right i i always was friends with mike their their bass player for a long time and he uh you know he's done his time i think he went to jail and he hopefully feels bad about it but he uh he got in trouble he got in some trouble and went to prison for a little bit and uh, <laughs> i think he's on i should be talking about this i'm not trying to like spill tea or anything it's public knowledge it's not um if anything maybe it'll bring more pro more press to uh to our tour um but you know that's not why i even mentioned it. i wasn't i was just thinking like wow like i hung out with him all the time like we always talked and had a good conversation you know mike and um you just 
you just never know like i wasn't his his demographic to like target so like i didn't get i didn't get ripped off but yeah he did his time and I, and he's all right i don't i don't know if he's even back in the band full time or what but that's just a wild one it's a wild one um yeah people are like wait wait what <laughs> Yeah, sometimes people do crazy things and they get sucked into like, you know, less than legal forms of business. And I think that's kind of what happened with him is, is it was too easy because like you're getting this money from people you don't even ever see face to face. It's just like you can kind of scam people without even calling them. It's just, I don't even know what the scam was, but there was some scam. Um, it's just wild. It's just wild. Like, everybody's everybody's come a long way and, and some people have come like taking it way too far right so um yeah uh so i guess i'm pretty close with those guys you could say <laughs> pretty close um you know their other bass player brian he i love that guy brian nelson he he's not their bass player anymore either he uh we toured all over the place together when i i filled in um on bass for the ataris one time in australia and in turn brian played guitar and um i would always hang out with brian in europe like after the shows chris was always like driving himself and he would go to bed and just be in his room or you know chris is very much like uh, likes his routines does his thing on tour so he'll hang out for a little bit but then once he's done he's done and he's gone so i'd always like I'm still there hanging with Brian. Brian and me just like would just be laughing so hard about, I don't know, anything, you know, like trying not to make noise going back into the place we were staying for the night with the bands and like just creaking up these stairs and every creak makes a huge noise. We're like, wow, like just teenagers, you know? And, and uh, yeah, man, like I've had so many different, different good times with those guys. And, uh, the Atari is really, you know, it's funny. People give them shit about, you know, Chris. They give Chris shit about, uh, you know, throwing his drums at his, at, a, at the drummer that one time where he, he went viral. And I got to admit, that was a bad look. Definitely not something I would do. <laughs> but, you know, that's part of what makes Chris Chris, you know. And he uh, he definitely, he's so much better now and and he's not as much of a hothead and he's you know he's he's worked through all that so like hey i love you brother i love chris there's no you know it's like no problem with it throw another drum set i don't give a fuck like the guy was not playing well over and over and over i still wouldn't throw a drum set at him but Chris had just gotten to the point where he just couldn't handle it anymore. He just literally, you know, you see the very end point of what had gone, gone up to that. And uh, so, you know, there's always two or three sides to a story. And I've heard Chris's story. And I've heard, you know, he doesn't, he's not trying to justify throwing the drums at it at all. But he's like, that's why I did it. Because, like, I kept telling him and I kept, you know, and, 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 uh, <sighs> You know, I don't know. Like, it's a punk rock band. You know, things crazy, things happen when you're traveling that much. You're traveling the world with these people, and 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 you just never know what to expect. Sometimes, you know. So, I'm good with it. But uh, I'm glad that that's behind him. I'm glad that I don't think we'll be seeing that on this tour. But we might see something. You never know, right? Come out, come see us. You know, Philadelphia is sold out. Uh, we got the second generation coming in with the father and the mother and we are ready to rock it cyrus cyrus is coming all the way from new mexico to the house of blues in orlando that's dedication cyrus thank you i you know just because of that that's why i answered your question like three times in three different ways <laughs> that third one maybe a little too much information on on all fronts but it's all public knowledge, and um, the only thing that's not public knowledge is is the Pepsi Zero, or sorry, Coke Zero. But then again, maybe that that was like seven, eight, ten years ago. Maybe he doesn't even drink that anymore. I quit caffeine like four years ago, 
now I'm I'm in the point I'm I'm to the point where I'm not going to start drinking coffee again, but now, now and again I might have a decaf, and then even now and again I might have a sip of a real coffee. I want a taste of it. I'm not going to drink the whole thing. A taste. I like the taste. I like warming up, getting that vibe. I'm I'm not opposed to that. So I didn't quit coffee because I was addicted to it, although I probably was. But I I did it more for health reasons, just to keep keep the um, the caffeine intake down. But that was all due to energy drinks, not even coffee. I think I feel like coffee is fine. Like, sure, there is a point where you're drinking too much caffeine. But aside from that, the coffee itself is it's just coffee. It's a bean. It's a bean. It's like water water strained through a bean. That's it. And what that bean is. There's no way to know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. All right. Uh, let's get to your next call. Hey, Mike. This is uh, Cyrus again. Um, I uh, actually just left my last call um, in the middle of listening to the uh, latest podcast um, as of today. And uh, I got inspiration for another question um, to ask about the new album after um, someone kind of asked uh, who, like, about the design process of like merch or like anything like that. Um, so, you know, I'm a big fan of like CD art, like CD booklets, all that stuff. Um, so when looking through it, I was kind of just curious, like, how did you guys come up with the, uh, space theme for the album? Like, it seems like, you know, poking out shows like, on like this different planet or something. Um, I don't know if that could tie into like the meaning of the album or like some of the songs or anything like that. So I was kind of curious how that came about, how the idea kind of formed um, of being about the space, I guess. Um, and Really quick, I just want to, again, just say how much I really like it. I uh, want to name my top three. So I, I'm a big fan of naming top three songs off albums, so for this one it'd probably be uh, Not Today, Cautious Optimistic, and Ready to Rage as my top three favorite songs with uh, When We Broke Through as an honorable mention. So, yeah, loving it. Can't wait to see you guys again. And, um, yeah, call them back soon. Bye. Rad. All right. Yeah, space theme. Um that came about just in conversations um, a lot. It kind of started when I was in Waco. And, a lot, you know, I've talked about it a little bit maybe on the podcast. But when I'm in Waco, I'm not doing as – I'm doing a lot of ideas. I'm doing a lot of thinking. I'm doing a lot of planning and a lot of conversations and talking to Tom Chichilla. And we were just talking every night about – possibilities what we're going what the artwork could be and pretty early on you know we we both liked the idea of something having to do with space and we didn't know if it was going to be poking at punk launched off a rocket or you know whatever right um but we just knew we, we we knew we wanted we wanted to be a space theme and find a way home was was an idea of it could go both ways it could be I'm not at home and I'm trying to find my way home to wherever that is, you know, or meaning you're on this planet that seems like it's Earth and you're trying to find your home planet, which is an alien planet. Or it could be, you know, more of a spiritual thing, like you're trying to find your way home and that could be anywhere. That could be, you know, where your family is. It could be where you feel comfortable, where you fit in, whatever. It could be... It could be, you know, doing something you love, doing a job you love. And it could be just being at a place you love, you know, your place, a house on the lake, a house in the forest, right? Like a, an apartment in the city, you know, whatever it is that's your home, right? Like it's different for everybody. And with the space theme, you know, we didn't want to specify that the Pocanetra Punk was at home or not at home that's really for the listener it's for the person that's looking at that cover and just making up their own story about it in a lot of ways um because we're all just trying to find what it is you know our calling our potential right trying to find our home and and it doesn't mean you have to live there forever but we need a home to to thrive you know um so because of the, the pandemic because of 
how weird things got and how political things got. You know, I just wanted to be uplifting and I wanted I wanted people to know that yes, the world's changed, but I think the the human experience hasn't changed. The human experience is still getting excited when your favorite band or one of your favorite bands I can't presume but uh, one of your favorite bands is coming to Philadelphia and you're going to see them at a sold out show with your son and your wife or, or you know, House of Blues Orlando all the way from New Mexico. I mean, it's not all, it doesn't always have to be bombardment with news about, and bad news and, you know, your more taxes, your inflation, gas prices going up. War in, you know, Ukraine, war in Israel, you know, war, like, it's just like, whoa, like, and that's just right now. I mean, a year, a couple ago, when we were, like, talking about all this, it was a whole new set of problems, you know, it was, it was a whole old set of problems. It was COVID and, you know, the unknown of that and, like, get your vaccine thing and, like, you know, like, let, I'll pay you, I'll buy you a pizza if you get this shot. Like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, uh, just the world went crazy. And so, like, MXPX, I always try to, like, be outside that in some ways, like, with, but while acknowledging that the world's crazy, but not making you think about each individual crazy thing that's happening. Um, there is a world outside of the craziness that's, that's right here, right now. There's people living a good life, people, people, you know, focused on their hobby, their sport. Um, there's people that gamble, you know, for a hobby and for a living that just like spend all their time online, but not looking at news, not looking at any, just looking at sports stats, following people that are talking about sports player, you know, and, and football players, basketball players, whatever, right? There's different worlds out there. And, and I feel like MXPX is a world. And that's another theme that works with the space theme. It's like we're a world you can find that's away from this craziness. This, you know, and I'm not saying you should ignore, put your head in the sand, not fight back, you know, but no, but sometimes you just need a place to go, right? We all need a break. We all need, we all need that, that time out. And, and MXPX can be that with this new album, especially just it's, it's a place to have a different perspective um, and like I said, it's not always all positive because that would feel, that wouldn't feel real, but in a world where everybody's trying to sell you something, everybody's telling you, no, this, this is the thing. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. I think MXPX is just trying to just, I don't know, interpret feelings in a true way and put that out there and and i can only have what i have from my perspective of course but i try to get what's going on in the world not just from my perspective but other people's like people lost a lot of family and 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 friends over the last few years um due to you know geez just divorce and 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 changing life situations and um you know, obviously medical stuff too. A lot of a lot of medical things. People going going downhill fast. Um, so, yeah, I mean, finding a, a a home away from all of that heartache. That's what what MXPX tries to do. Um, and and I'm not necessarily like thinking about that while we're like coming up with this name. No, I'm just. You, know, you kind of have to have an idea of what you want and then you like start moving towards that idea. And so the space theme, it went through so many iterations as, as you know, most things in life do once they finally become developed, you know, you don't usually start developed. Um, and, and those that do, you know, you always find that they, they weren't developed. You just thought they were just, they were just really good at that time, but then they got even better and developed even more. So if you start out really good, just know you can even get better, better from there. So yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. The, the, the space theme I thought was, and I still love it. I still, 
you can see it behind me still love the space theme and uh hope you guys do too uh let's go let's move on thanks cyrus hey mark it's gavin lamer from tucson arizona i've been an mxbx fan since 2020 and i am 14 years old my dad introduced me to mxbx and he has listened to you since the beginning of your band i'm a huge fan of find a way home i can't stop listening to it my question is do you plan on coming to arizona anytime soon for a show I also saw you on the Fix Your Upper show. You are my favorite musician. Hope you hear this. Thanks for listening. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Tucson's a, a cool city. I've spent a lot of time there. Tommy Rat, um, a very legendary part of the MHPX crew from the back in the day. He used to manage us and tour manage us and do our sound. He still lives there and we've spent a lot of time at his house just hanging in tucson uh before tours after tours during tours he used to own a pizza place in tucson by the way so thank you so much for the call uh love that your dad introed mxpx to you and i love even more that you were receptive to it and you and you like it so um to answer your question we don't have a show on the books in arizona anytime soon you know nothing that's on the schedule but Yes, we we do play there, so we'll probably end up, you know, somewhere in Phoenix again uh, next time we we come, unless something crazy happens and we end up in Tucson. Of course, that's definitely possible. Um, you never know. But yeah, I, I would I would say if you really want to see us soon, your best bet is to get your dad to take you to the January sixth show in Los Angeles. You could see MXPX, Less Than Jake. Reliant K, Smoking Popes, all those bands, and not just MXPX, uh, if, you know, because I have no guarantees of who we'll be with when we come back to, to, to Arizona in any capacity. But I was just there with uh, Goldfinger. Um, great spot. It rained. I think I brought the rain with me. Sorry, guys. But hopefully you needed it because uh, it, didn't, it didn't bother us too much. We were from there. We were in New Mexico after that uh, doing a private gig with Goldfinger and the rain did mess with us we had to wait hours and hours later for sound check and then finally got it done and and the show ended up being great it was amazing uh so much fun so many cool people and and got to have a, a great time but uh it's 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 kind of surreal like getting to do something fun and then also get paid for it but um that's the the crazy life i'm living out here all right thank you thanks for the call we're gonna take one more call and uh and if you guys didn't hear your, your voicemail yet and you already called in, stay tuned. I will get to it. Uh, we'll get to it eventually. And, of course, if you haven't called yet, you can call in 360-830-6660. Leave a voicemail. All right, here's the last one. Thank you guys for your calls. Hi, Mike. This is Daniel Joseph Larry calling MS Tech Memes. And I had a question for you about something I've been thinking a lot about with with all music recently and that's vocal melodies and what your process is for those and if you have any philosophies on how do you construct excuse me <coughs> how do you construct a uh what you feel like is a good vocal melody like how does it intertwine with the music where does it come in the process and i've been thinking about this a lot recently because there's this whole new crop of like punk bands that I should like, but often when I find the tracks for me enjoying them is like, at, you know, at worst, a bland or boring vocal melody or a vocal melody that you expect. That it's a vocal melody you just, yeah, that's what you expected to go with this kind of song. Um, like even a bad vocal melody, like it might at least be entertaining, but, um, I just, and then I don't hear a lot of other musicians, like when I listen to interviews or people break down, different artists break down their songwriting process, I don't hear them talk about vocal melodies. You hear them talk about lyrics and you will hear them talk about, you know, vocal exercises and getting their voice right. But you very seldom hear an artist, at least I very seldom heard an artist talk about what do they put into their vocal melody along with the songwriting. And as a non-musician, it seems like it just happens, right? It's just off the dome. You're just singing what you feel like singing after you pick up your 
guitar or sat at the piano, you just start singing what you feel like singing. But it is, is it always first thought, best thought? Because maybe that's when a vocal melody is bad. So how do you revise the vocal melody? And, um, you know, one of the only examples I can think of where I've seen something interesting about vocal melodies is like with uh, Five Iron Frenzy, because in some recent songs, Scott has done the demo, and he has that completely different vocal melody and different lyrics, but completely different vocal melody. And then once Reese gets to it, he com- he writes a totally different vocal melody. And it just shows you how, especially with like this punk thing, with like punk rock, where you just have the guitar, the bass, and the drums, and often the music can be interchangeable, you know, for good or bad, it can be interchangeable with other bands. What really makes the band is, or makes that song different from other punk songs, is the vocal melody on top. I just don't hear a lot of talk about that. So I want to hear your thoughts on how you approach it. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, good thought. What's up, Daniel? Uh, hope you're, hope the baby's well. Um, melody, vocal melody process, you know, it is so important, and you're right. Vocal melody basically dictates what the song sounds like. Um, but then, uh, you know, so does the music. It kind of dictates what the song sounds like. But I think it's the pairing of the two that really makes things different. Because um, you could take this vocal melody that sounds like this way and put backing music behind it that fits great. And you could put a totally different sounding backing music that also fits great, but sounds very mellow and chill. And the other one sounds like real fast and crazy. So like all of these things work together, but let me just break down my songwriting and, and yes, it, you know, focused on, on the melody, the singing melody and song melody process. But yeah, when I start writing a song, I pick up a guitar. Dun, 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 dun. I may I might have like a, an idea, right? Like a melody. Um, sometimes it's a melody, but that melody might change. So it's not always what's first is best, but sometimes it is. Um, but my process is pretty much to reiterate something. Like I take a, a, a big rock and this is my idea and I start chiseling and I don't know what, I have the idea of what I, what I want it to be, but once I actually, actually chisel it, I mean, I can't chisel as good as my brain can chisel, right? So my brain chisels the perfect song, but it's not its not as if it's like um, a 3D rendering in my head of the song where, you know, Mozart can like see the notes exactly. Like for me, it's a feeling, it's a vibe, it's, it's an abstract thought of, okay, this is the song. And melody is a huge part of that, uh but melody changes based on the feeling how ramped up you are you might go high here or you might stay low um but for me i might have a really i might have a song progression i like and i will rarely ch- and i will change that to fit a melody um but what i'm saying is like you can almost just like have that song bed music bed and you could write a different melody each day to that bed and some of those melodies will be great some of them will be terrible and it's just like that's the way music is i guess so it's really always a choice there's how far are you willing to go with it and and i think the reason why maybe some of these bands you're listening to nowadays have songs that don't resonate is because they're just not going very far they're 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 writing a song and they're letting the technology and the samples and the, the background music and the, the effects on the vocal and the clever, maybe there's, there's a clever catchphrase, which you should have. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, but they let all these things sort of take precedent instead of like, for me, I'm like iterating on the actual song part for like forever, you know, for a, for a while and just making sure I really like it. And I really want to sing that again. And I feel like I didn't do that always in the past um, to my dress detriment sometimes, but you know, I've gotten lucky. We, we all get lucky. Um, so yeah, I mean, songwriting process, like it's very important to have a melody that is you. But for me, I don't have any, I don't have a formula. Um, 
I do write songs kind of the same way where I have the idea in my phone and I'll go back through and I'll listen to those ideas and I'll be like, okay, that's the one I'm going to work on. And I'll work on that because there's so many things you can work on. It's like, how, how do you decide? Sure. Sometimes it just comes out of the blue and you write the song then. But a lot of times when I have the song idea, I'm driving or I'm like already working on something else that I'm not, I'm not songwriting. So uh, it is this thing, and I've talked about this in the past, you, I do have to schedule songwriting, um, which makes it not as romantic. Um, but say like something like Cautious Optimistic, you know, that, that melody didn't come exactly like that the first time I, I played it. You know, it was, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but, you know, like... Um, let me tell you something about me now. I'm very wary way to go Like there's no way I started with that Let me let me find I've got I've got all these in my phone All these like demos I just go to um, vo My demos My voice memo Shoot Don't, don't erase that <laughs> um, And then I can just find Song titles of songs that are already on the record And then there's song titles that haven't been finished yet um yeah here we go wait do we go here we go yeah here we go cautious optimistic um this is Let me just tell you about me now. It's different. I'm very wary when I go out. I look both ways six times before I cross the street. I need a meeting <laughs> just to put shoes on my feet. So it's different. You see that? So now it's... Let me tell you something about me now. I'm very wary when I go out. I look both ways six times before I cross the street I need a meeting just to put shoes on my feet And I soon the best but always planning for the very worst Alright Let's see what else we got here Let's see, let's see what this is Let me just tell you about me now <laughs> Yeah, it's just weird I'm very So it's similar, but it's slightly different, you know? Alright, so... Yeah, so that's a good illustration of how I iterate. I iterate, and I... and I. Let me tell you... Oh yeah, and then it's like a different key. Let me tell you something about me now. So like... Let me tell you something about me now. I mean, I could do that, you know... I, let me tell you something about me now I'm very wary when I go out I look both ways six times before I cross the street Or I could do Let me tell you something about me now I'm very wary when I go out I look both ways six times before I cross the street I need a meeting just to put shoes on my feet So there's a little tension in there It's kind of cool So I mean there's just so many ways to do it That Yeah, those those bands that are that you're not digging They just chose a weird a not Maybe not weird enough way Maybe it's just too blah It's like the same notes over and over And it gets old But like you know, you got to have some sort of swing to to your voice, you know, something that somebody else can't do. Like, I, I got a pretty basic singing voice. I don't do too many, like, gymnastics, but I definitely can nail most of the pitches 
um, I wouldn't say like Fallout Boy quality, but but I do pretty good. Uh, I do better than most punk rock singers, I would say. I just put I put that out there. But um, yeah, just having some sort of like swing to your voice matters too um, with the melodies. Being able to like feel that out, like so many melodies you could do over this, right? That's just it's always been like that. Assume the best, assume the best, always planning for the very worst. My numbers on my Venmo balance, even at my bad luck reversed. <laughs> It's almost like a harmony, like a lower harmony or something. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's my process. Is I just sing it until kind of like I can sing it the same way over and over. And if I don't want to keep fighting that, then I'm usually pretty happy with that. But I'll, I'll keep slightly tweaking melodies even even after it's recorded, after a record's recorded and out. And I might sing it a little different live. Um, just put a little something on it. That's very real. I mean, that's that's just that's just me. I, I just can't I can't help myself, you know. So uh, find a way home. I know it feels like it's been out for a while, but like it's still new for us. It's still I mean, it's not new, but it's new. It's like we're still talking about it. We're gonna keep talking about it because we have these shows coming up, and we're gonna be playing the songs. So. I'm excited. I'm excited to play these new songs live and really get in front of an audience. And uh, hmm. and we've been doing that a little bit. You know, we did, you know, Not Today and Stay Up All Night. And those, that that's great. Like when we were in, in, we were in Indonesia, played up, uh, we played Stay Up All Night and the crowd was just singing it so loud. And we didn't expect that, you know. Um, you don't really ever really expect a brand new song to be sung as loud as, as you know, your older songs. And they usually aren't, which is fine because you, you need, need some time to learn it. Because Let's Ride definitely didn't start as loud as it is now. Now people yell that chorus so loud and it's powerful. It's so powerful. It feels so good. Let's ride, let's ride on through the rain. All right, you guys, uh, stay tuned for, for more. Uh, I've been putting out episodes every Monday, and I, I feel like I can continue to get that done for you guys. Even I had some guests planned. We'll see what happens with them. You know, when people want to schedule far out, I go, okay, hit me up when you're ready, and then they just, people forget. Um, but uh, when, I get, when I get more guests, I'll just throw them on here. But until then, keep... Keep uh, sending in those voicemails. You know I love it. And the Music Monday submissions. Give us a YouTube link on the Facebook My Career Podcast group, and we will get you on an episode, get your song on there. And if you watch on YouTube, you can even see your video on there if you have a video or a picture of you or whatever it is. I usually try to put that on there. Uh, all right. That's it, y'all. Love you. Peace. Hope you guys are well. And thank you so much for supporting MXPX, everything we do. Thanks for listening. And thanks for uh, coming to see us live. All right. See you soon. <laughs>